Russell Martin, Southampton, went 21 games unbeaten after that 3-1 win at Swansea at the weekend with a 100-year club record broken in the process. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at this incredible 4-3-3. Russell Martin, the former Norwich and Scotland international, started his managerial career at MK Dons. Two seasons with the Dons, which saw the club finish 19th and 13th. Now, you might think that's not anything to shout about. However, it was the possession-based style of football that he installed at the club, which was highlighted with a 56-pass move, which was a British record at the time. At the accumulation of the 2020-21 season, only Manchester City and Barcelona had a higher average possession percentage in Europe than Martin's MK Dons. Following two successful seasons at MK Dons, he then moved on to Swansea City, once again building that possession-based brand of football, often though reverting to a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-2-1. Relegated Southampton came calling in June in 2023, named as the new manager. Now, despite a decent start against Sheffield Wednesday, making a total of 477 passes in the first half, a division record, the team went on to have 80% of the ball so to give you a little insight into Russell Martin Southampton so far, so they rank first in the championship for passes completed, possession, passes into the box, deep completions, which is successful passes within 20 metres of the opposition goal. They also rank first for deep progressions, which is passes, dribbles and carries into the opposition final third. They're second in the league for non-penalty XG, only getting beat at the moment by Leeds United. And they do rank 17th in the division for counter-attacking shots. This obviously comes down to Russell Martin's style of play. But also, with the amount of possession that Southampton are getting, it's going to be quite limited when they get those counter-attacking opportunities. And then a couple of defensive actions. They're ranking first for PPDA and defensive distance. So basically how far are the way they are from their own goal when they're making those pressing actions. So tackles, interceptions, etc. All right, that is a breakdown of how Southampton generally look. And then we're going to work through the players as we go to see the roles and which roles in FM I've put them into. All right, let's go and check out, first of all, the simulation. Now, if you want in this tactic, there is a link down in the description to over the Patreon. You can direct download it and support in the channel at three quid a month. Muchly appreciated. If not, when we get to the tactic, don't worry, I'm going to go through the player roles, player instructions, team instructions, any opposition instructions as well that I might have. I will put them all in this video so you can copy it in and put it into your FM24 save. Now, you won't believe the simulation that I've had with this tactic and with this team. Three trips to Wembley in one season. A playoff victory against Norwich. We won the FA Cup, beating Brentford in the final, and we're runner-up in the Carabao Cup. Losing, unfortunately, to Liverpool. An absolutely incredible season. I think you all want to base it off the league. The league season where we actually finished on 98 points and still didn't get promoted. And you imagine how many extra games we've had to play. The 46 in the league. Eight in the Carabao Cup. That puts us on to 54. And then another seven in the FA Cup. Getting us to a total of 61 games for the season. And as you can see, we've not just had a lucky route through to the final. We've beaten Wolves, Palace. We had to do a replay against Shrewsbury, but we beat Manchester United. We beat Newcastle. And these are Manchester United had a team of Varane, Martinez, Shaw, Bambasaka, Casemiro, Mount Fernandez. It was the strongest team, basically. Getting through to the final and beating Brentford on penalties. Neil Mopé missing the winning penalty to give us an absolutely incredible win. The Carabao Cup as well. We beat Newcastle on pens. We beat Arsenal 4-0. What was Arsenal's team like? Yeah, not bad. Not 100%, but Enketia, Rowe, Nelson, Trossard, Rice, Partey, White, Saliba, Kio, and Tommy Asu. Yeah, it pretty much was full strength. So an absolutely incredible result. Look at the team. We've dominated the ball. We've dominated Arsenal with the ball. 59% possession. 13 shots compared to their 10 with an XG of 1.92 compared to their 0.7. And I think if it wasn't, for playing all those cup games, we would have actually probably gone on to win the league. Like 61 league, 61 games in a season is a lot. And we were only two points off. We scored the most goals, 97. 52, so maybe just a couple leaked that we would have liked. But it is an extremely attacking tactic. And at the same time as well, there is a couple of changes that I'm going to show you in-game. That I would maybe tweak depending on our opponents and a couple of roles. In particular, the two number eights and what to do with them in certain games. So most Russell Martin's team on this incredible run, and I do put the early season form down to players such as 
James Ward-Prowse, who was starting club captain, joined in most of the preseason, actually played the first game against Sheffield Wednesday. So obviously losing him, then Flynn Downs coming in with the, him going in the opposite direction, taking time for him to bed in. Nathan Teller also played, I think it was like three games before then, he was eventually moved on to Leverkusen, joined qu them quite late in the transfer window. So there was a little bit of a transition. Also, they've gone from the gegenpressing pressing the directness of uh, Ralph Hassenhutl's 4 triple two. They've then gone to Nathan Jones, his pragmatic, real defence, not defence, yeah, defensive, pragmatic style of play. And then to flip to Russell Martin, it was always going to take time, but it's maybe kicked on now to an incredible level, maybe earlier than what they'd expected. They've obviously got some real quality in the side, but it has to be all down to Russell Martin's way of playing. All right, and this is how it looks in FM. Okay, so starting goal, we've gone sweeper-keeper on attack, Gavin Bazunu. Now, we've gone for it on attack because he's definitely a key part in build-up. It's interesting, Southampton are ranked first for goalkeeper long passes. But at the same time, if we look at the pass passes that he made in the win against Swansea at the weekend, all three, the top three passes are to the defenders. And what I think it means, because a long pass is considered anything over, I think it's 25 metres. I think bazunu has got the skills actually looking for some midfielders. He's looking for Flynn Downs. He's looking at Manning and Walker-Peters in out wide. And he generally likes to build up from the back. So we're going to put him on attack. We want him to be take more risks because we want him to pass into these areas. We want to maybe sweep balls out to the flanks at times. Okay, so we've got him on attack. Kyle Walker-Peters is an interesting one. Like probably the best, well, not probably, he will be the best right back in the division. Wing back on support, dribble more. Now, at the start of the season, if we look at the, the heat map against the win against uh, Sheffield Wednesday, it was a lot more inverted, a lot more working in this half space here. But recently, they've found him in a little bit more of a wider position. I think that's maybe potentially down to Adam Armstrong on this right-hand side because he's naturally a centre-forward. He's been playing on this right-hand side much more, but obviously wants to drift in and be a little bit more of a box threat. So if he's coming in narrow, we do need to have someone to keep the width. So that's why I maybe think it's maybe changed a little bit tactically. We've also got the rule of small bone as well, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And then moving over to the right centre-back, we've got Harwood Bellis, uh, a loan signing, I think, from Manchester. City. I think he actually came in quite late as well in the transfer winner. He didn't play in the first few games of the season. So another reason maybe why it took a little bit of time for Southampton to, to find their groove. Playing instructions for him, dribble more and stay wider on the basis that we can just build when Bazunu's got the ball. I'm hoping that we can kind of build with that back two and the two fullbacks kicking on, but we're going to have them a little bit wide. So then potentially it opens up a passing lane into Flynn Downs at the same time. Left-hand side, Bednarek, we've just got dribble more on him. And then the fullback left hand side, Manning, absolute tremendous. Same to Kyle Walker Peters, can definitely come and in invert at times. You could quite easily change that. If you wanted to roam a little bit, you could quite easily put that as a complete wing back on support. Now, into the number six role, Flynn Downs has been absolutely tremendous for Southampton since he's, I think it's a low move from West Ham. Now, I've been struggling to start with of what role to put. Like, I think at some games, it would maybe be a deep line playmaker on defend. Absolutely. And if we look at some stats for Flynn Downs for the season so far, not huge in terms of pressure. I think the pressure is basically down to the front players and he's basically there in a little bit of a rest defence position, making sure that he is there if that first line of press gets beat. Passing numbers, absolutely incredible. 94% passing with a 99% percentile for the division. As you can see from his progressive passes, carries and take-ons, Quite low, quite average in possession. So basically, he kind of, for me, feels like a bit of a ticker. He likes to get on. He's definitely evolved in build-up, but it is a little bit more conservative, ensuring that he doesn't give the ball away. And obviously, with his pass completion so high, that kind of makes sense. So when it comes to his role... You could probably get away with a deep line playmaker on defend with the instruction of tackle harder. But what we don't want him to do is take him more risks. So the passing risk for your team is entirely up to you. But I would maybe potentially at times even put it on defensive midfield and defend. Now I've put it on defend because if you look at his heat map for the season, he doesn't venture into either box, to be fair. He's very much getting involved in that middle third of the pitch. So I don't want him venturing into sort of like these areas at times. I think a lot of the time when you see his heat map in these wider areas, I think he's just helping in ball progression and maybe stopping counter-attacks rather than actually playing around in these areas in here. 
Okay, into the middle two. Now this is this is where I think you we've got so much flexibility. So if we have a look, basically, if we've got small burn. Now I think depending on the opponent and who they're playing, some of these heat maps, some of these average positions are quite high. He's in always wide. Like the two eights are very aggressive and very wide. The small bone one, you could, and looking at the, the average positions of the game against uh, Swansea at the weekend, he's more playing as a Carrilero. So you could quite easily see him moving into this area here and allowing Walker Peters, perhaps, to go a little bit further on. You could even do Carrilero in some games with get further forward on. Okay, so that is a role that you could change. Sometimes he looks as high as a Mazala and he's in here, but he's obviously well suited to that Carrilero uh, basic or Carrilero with that instruction of get further forward. Now, Armstrong the same. If we look at his heat map for the season, he is so wide. Getting into these wide areas. So that's why I put him as a Mazala on attack. But the goal that they scored at the weekend against Swansea, I think it was the opening goal that he helped set up for Shea Adams. Basically, a ball goes in to Shea Adams, who drops off, drops into this area. I'll put some screenshots off now. And it's a third man run, and it's a very aggressive third man run. He sprints to get in beyond, and then he cuts it back. So that could be quite easily be central midfielder on attack. And I would do the player instruction with that one, stay wider as well, because of where he is generally on the heat map. Okay, moving into these two wider players, Fraser will start with, we've got, Inverted winger on attack. He likes to come in. He likes to come in and create. With him being right-footed, he's naturally going to come in on the right-hand side. Also, if we look at his heat maps, he is extremely high. Him and Armstrong. It all depends on generally who's playing. But because of the role of Shea Adams, who likes to drop in here and create things, it makes sense for Fraser and Armstrong to go beyond. We've got an inside forward on that right-hand side with Armstrong because we want him to be the goal threat. So I think it was important to just change it up a little bit and have Fraser as an inverted winger on attack. Moving into Adam Armstrong, probably the key player for Southampton this season. As you can see, he's moved about the pitch a bit. These are the positions that he's played in during the season. So a little bit up front. I think that was generally more at the start of the season. Also, when Shea Adams goes off, they have got Mara as well that can come in up there. So depending on what's available, but he has tended to play more on this right-hand side. Interestingly as well, he's played a little bit as a number eight as well. So it just shows you the quality that he has. And also from his 44 shots this season, 10 league goals... 10 assists, XG of with an XG of only 5.27, incredible, 10 assists, 34 key passes, very, very dangerous on that right-hand side. So we've got him as an inside forward on attack. He's going to be our goal scorer, our goal threat, with the player instruction of shoot more often because we want him acting as that centre forward. And I've also got Rome position because you often look at some of his heat maps, I'll put the one on from the weekend. As you can see, he often drifts around into these areas here. He's all over. He's not all over the place. He knows what he's doing. He's all over the place in terms of getting on the ball. He'll also play as a striker at times. In particular, when Adams does that, you would then want Armstrong coming in off that right-hand side and being that threat, especially when the ball is getting built up on that left-hand side. And then moving into Shea Adams, the central striker, we've got him as the DLF on attack. It could quite easily be a complete forward on support. It could even be a times of false nine. He does like to drift in. The but after watching the first goal at the weekend, he comes in here, lays the ball off to Armstrong, who then, who's then drove into the area. Armstrong then cuts in onto his right foot, shot, saved. And, and then Adams is there at the fast stick to, tack, to tap in from about four yards. So I put it on DLF on attack with the hope that he'll drift in and build, help build up with the play. And then he will then spin in and hopefully get a few goals. And as you can see by his heat map, there's a couple of red areas in and around sort of like 30, 40 yards from goal where he's liking to drop off. He's not the biggest. I actually thought he's actually smaller than what I thought at five foot nine. Now he has got decent strength and stuff. So he's really good at holding off defenders. But obviously what he won't really want He's standing up alongside a big centre half who's maybe going to dominate him a little bit more physically with height and strength. So he likes to drift in and it gives the defenders something to worry about. At times he can turn, at times he can go. And if you look at his key passes, well, there's a couple of passes in and around there, in and around sort of like that 35 yards where he's probably looking to find an Armstrong or a Dozy, a runner, a Rebo maybe at times as well. All right, that is all the team roles and player instructions. Now we're going to move into the team 
instructions. So, positive mentality with fairly wide attacking width, and I will change this depending on the opponent. At times, we've played against a back three, and we want players, in particular the fullbacks at times, if, if Armstrong's coming in and inverting and Fraser on that side, we need to make sure those fullbacks are nice and wide. We've got play out of defence on. That is obvious with the build-up and the possession numbers that we're getting. So play out of defence. And we've gone focused left and right. And we've done that because of this little one here, the attacking side. So left-hand side, 39%. Right-hand side, 34%. And through the middle, only 26 So that's why I've done feature left and right in when we're focusing our player. Shorter passing directness. We don't want to just keep possession for possession sake. So I just thought shorter is, I think shorter is a really good medium. I think sometimes much shorter, which I'm doing in my main save on FM24. Sometimes we have loads of the ball and don't do anything with it. So I think shorter is probably the best passing directness with tempo slightly higher. Never time wasting. Working to the box. Mainly because we've got the most touches in the penalty area, Southampton. We want to work it. We're not overly blessed with sort of like the number nine if Shea Adams and Armstrong are up there. They're not big physical players that will love having balls floated into the box or work into the box on. And obviously, be more expressive with a Russell Martin side. In transition, we're going with that counter-press. Counter-press is a massive thing. And obviously, with the defensive distance as well, they are looking to press quite high with no counter-attack on. Remember, I said Southampton was 17th for counter-attacking uh, with shots leading from a counter-attack. So we're leaving that off. We've then slow the pace down when Bazunu gets it. We're asking him to distribute to centre half. Remember, he went long. So we've got sweeper keeper on attack, remember. So then when he does like to change, and the FM match engine decides to change things up. He will do that anyway. He will not always pass to the two centre-halves. I've left that off, so then it gives him the option to roll it out, pass it out, kick it a little bit shorter. Obviously, take long kicks, no, but we'll maybe get those 20, 30, 35-yard passes into maybe a holding midfielder, into the fullbacks, maybe gone a little bit higher up. Out of possession, we've gone for it with a high press, and a much higher line, really aggressive with the much, or, much more often trigger press because we've got that high pressure numbers. The pressure numbers are not absolutely massive, but that's because they're not pressing as much because they have most of the ball, if that makes sense. So their pressing numbers are good against the amount of times that they're out of possession. Step up more, being really aggressive with that high line. Trap outside as well. Now let's go and see what it looks like in the match engine. Well, so the first goal is just an example of what Flynn Downs will do as a deep line playmaker if you put him as a deep line playmaker. Okay, so in build up, here he is. He's quite deep on the ball, which is where we kind of want him. Playing it quite simple. This is Bree playing as the right back role. We've got Armstrong, we've got Shea Adams, and Stuart Armstrong playing as that Mazala on attack. So just look at the opposite, look at the space that he's getting into with a dozy out on this left hand side. And if we just watch Flynn Downs. There he is. He does end up going a little bit higher. Now, what you could even do in some of the big games, I've kind of forgot to mention, you could probably put him as an anchor as well, as well because he just wants to be steady in possession. Now, this is... Flint Downs will do this very occasionally, but it doesn't happen very often. But then the movement of Armstrong, if we just take it back a touch, because he's an inside forward, he's a central striker, he wants to get into the penalty area. He drives in and look at Stuart Armstrong, Mazala on attack. We've also got the opportunity potential of a little cutback there as well to the other Mazala. And here we go, a goal that we just shows you what we're like in position. Holgate is actually doing the defensive midfielder role at the time. Smallburn's got his Mazala role on the right-hand side. We've got Bree out here and Aribo as well, acting as the, right -hand, the attacking threat from the right-hand side. And what we've got is that line of five. I think it's going to be maybe Andozi, who have we got? Uh, Shea Adams up front, Stuart Armstrong doing that left that left sided number eight. It's a deep cross to the fast stick. Odozi heads home. But if we just bring it back, that's what we're trying to create recreate here. Armstrong been very aggressive as the eight. He's obviously tried to make a run there. We've got the the kind of Carrillero Mazala on support role being a little bit more of an option. We've got the city midfielder sat in between the two centre halves, and then Bednarek on that right hand side is a little bit wider because we've got that instruction of we've got that instruction of stay wider. And this goal as well in build up, Mason Holgate is now playing as the right midfield, uh, the, sorry, the right fullback. There is Flint Downs just re recycling position, uh, possession. Adam Armstrong's going to be the eventual goal scorer. A little bit narrower look, so we need that width from that right back. 
We're keeping the possession of the ball. That's what Flynn Downs does so well, just keeps the play ticking. Carl Walker-Peters roll across and look at Adam Armstrong getting right into the six-yard box to tap in. Just a few little highlights like Adam Armstrong has had an incredible season. As you can see, top goal scorer, most assists, highest average rating and highest uh, player of the match awards. So a total of what? 39 goal contributions, an absolutely tremendous season. I did think that he would be really well. He's one of those players that superbly well suited to the championship. And maybe just because he moved to Southampton and had kind of two unsuccessful seasons, maybe because last season was a complete write-out for Southampton. When they do get promoted this season, it'd be interesting to see, can he then finally make that step up as a Premier League footballer? All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this more in-depth kind of tactical video that we're now going to be doing for the foreseeable. Hope you've enjoyed it. Smash a like on today's video, so important for me. Thank you. And uh, let me know any future tactics down in the comments.